Hello everybody and welcome to my podcast Just Still Minutes. Um, for those of you that are new, uh, welcome and for those of you that are returning viewers, welcome back. I've seen that I've had quite some new followers recently, so welcome and I'm happy to share more about my knits with you. Uh, you might notice if you're a returning viewer that I uh, filmed this in another uh, in another background. This is uh, one of the places in my garden. I, ha I don't have a big garden, but I have grass and I have this. Uh, and this is also the reason why I didn't have a lot of time to film in the last week. So it has been five weeks since I have... Uh, oops, sorry. I just uh, touched the, uh, the touch the table where you are on. Um, so uh, it has been five weeks because we have been painting here. This wall was dark blue. So you can imagine that before getting it into this uh, lighter uh, green, that it has... Uh, taken us a lot of uh, coats of paint so uh, that's why it has taken uh, yeah this was my main uh, focus after work apart from knitting but I didn't have time to film a podcast so uh, now I have time because this looks like it's finished and it's not I'm just looking at some things I have to uh, bring to the recycle park <laughs> but it's fine um, we have ordered the other furniture, so I have uh, two pieces of furniture already, I will pop a picture, uh, but the other furniture will only arrive at the end of August, so we have time to uh, look for decorations, but we want to enjoy this place already, so we have this spot for the two of us. So uh, that's life updates, uh, it's summer. Um, I'm not wearing any knitwear as you can see, but this dress is handmade. I, s I have sewn this myself, I think, three or four years ago. Uh, it's a long dress. Uh, yeah, I like it. It still fits me, although I gained a little bit of weight since then. Uh, like, COVID and working from home wasn't a good thing uh, for my weight, but it, yeah, it's still fine since it's, this still fits me. Um, let's start. I also bought some baskets to be organized for the podcast. This is my FO basket. Some baskets to be organized for the podcast. This is my FO basket. And it contains my FOs, my finished objects. And the first one is this sweater. It's a sundial sweater from Harry's Makes. I think, yeah, this is the right angle. <laughs> Um, so it's a uh, sweater which has uh, sundials which go all the way down uh, to the sweater. I will just pop it on and I will ruin my hair, but I don't care. Um, yeah, I will not uh, keep it on because it's uh, quite warm. It's 100% uh, wool. So uh, I love the fit. As you can see, I think it's a perfect fit. I don't like too oversized, or at least not for most of my garments, so this is a perfect amount of positive ease. We'll just take it off again, because it's uh, warm today. Um, this is made in a combination of Holst Super Soft and uh, Drops Kit Silk Mohair, which makes that it's a warm sweater. Um, it itches a bit, um, I think it's the Holst, because uh, I know that I can... Uh, have the mohair against my skin uh, or it might be because it's quite warm um what else to say it smells sheepy um so it's a really rustic yarn it's, it's one of the most rustic yarns i've ever used and um i like the fact that i can use a rustic yarn um it's still soft though it's not like a uh, let loopy or something so it's quite okay and i think it will be in a perfect transition to learn how to appreciate the more rustic yarns so uh, i'm looking forward uh, no that's the wrong thing uh, i don't look forward to autumn or winter because i prefer summer but uh, when it comes i will look forward to wear this one <laughs> that's better so I will put this away. If you have any questions about it, uh, the sweater isn't of the pattern isn't released yet. It will be released in August, but there is a summer top version that you can buy now. So if you're into this type of design and you want to start earlier and you want something for summer, just pop over to Harris Makes Ravelry page to buy this. 
And then I still have some other FOs. Since it's five weeks and I have been knitting socks, uh, I have three pair of finished socks. Um, the first pair is these, uh, or these, these are the Margerit socks from Ginger and Time. It's a Dutch pattern um, and I've made it in the hand dyed yarn of Ginger and Time, which is a Belgian lap shop. She dyes in really small amounts, so um, it's yeah, a unique yarn. And actually, I've worn it once in my white sneakers. Just remember, white sneakers, I only have one pair, by the way. And the heel is still fine. A little bit of pilling, but not a lot. Um, I've worn them once. I will uh, most likely only wear them again in the winter. Or maybe uh, autumn or something, because it's high socks and I mostly wear sneaker socks for the moment. But uh, I wanted to try them and I can say... This yarn is still fine. My foot were sweaty. Of course, my feet were sweaty. Of course, they were because these are winter socks. But these socks, these socks are still fine. I love the yarn. Love the pattern. The second pair of socks is for my husband. It's the Perfect uh, from Regia Sackenmeyer. So it's actually self-striping, well, self-patterning yarn. I love it. It's really nice. Um, I did buy more of this, I've ordered more of these, so uh, looking forward to that. Uh, because of the design, I chose a short row heel, um, which is not my preferred type of heel, but um, it's fine. So I like these. I like uh, the knit with them because it, it has a nice feeling, so I really like this type of yarn. Um, they are not worn yet. Uh, because they are also warm winter socks, so I cannot say if the yarn is good comparing uh, to other yarns, but it's uh, it's fine for the moment, and they fit my husband. And then this one makes my heart bleed. It's these are shorties in the uh, yarn from Yulia, and I don't know if it shows on camera, but there was a lot of felting. I saved them a little bit. Uh, here you can see it better this point I can I think well it's a light yarn so it's difficult to show um, these are shorties from Summer Lee and um, I wore them last week in my shoes I came home and the socks were like halfway down my heel and they shrank a, a huge amount only by white wearing them in my white sneakers the same white sneakers as I have been wearing uh, my green socks in which are still fine uh, my feet were sweaty, okay, but this is supposed to be super wash yarn. Super wash yarn should not shrink uh, because of sweaty feet, I guess. Uh, how did I save them? Uh, I found on the internet that if you use hair conditioner to wash them and then put them on your blocking uh, device that it, you can stretch them, so I did. Um, they're not as nice anymore, but they fit again. Um, yeah, it's such a pity. I'm glad this is not my first um, pair of socks and not my first pair of hand dyed socks because otherwise I would be demotivated I guess. I have a huge amount of hand dyed yarn in my stash that I want to use to make socks so I'm glad that yeah that this most likely is only this type of yarn I hope so. Um, what I will do is um, I will not buy a lot from one shop anymore at once. I will only buy one or two skeins uh, from one type of yarn of a shop and then see if it holds good or not, if it stays good or not, and then decide to buy more or not. So that's what I'm going to do in the future. But while it happened, I think I'm not the only one with that problem, but um, yeah. If you have any advice on yeah not having this i know some people don't wear their socks i mean you need to wear something no so yeah that's a disadvantage i will just put this basket away because i'm done with evos and so i can continue with just attention okay sorry i did hit you again um i will just go through my evos i have a lot why because I started some extra things in the last week and put some other things on hold, so um, that's why it's me. I'm sorry. I also have other older whips that are still on hold, but yeah. 
first one is socks. Um, these are the Marguerite socks for my husband. I knit them two at a time. It's the slowest process ever. So as you can see, yeah, I don't have a lot. I still am still not finished with the leg. It's not my preferred way of knitting socks. So um, yeah, sorry. Uh, this yarn is uh, Koopnitz Socks Yeah. Uh, I bought a ginger and thyme. The pattern is from ginger and thyme as well. So, uh, yeah. One day they will be finished. <laughs> Not today. Okay, I will just pop this thing there. Next is something you've seen before as well, which is the Piazza Tea from Sari Nordland, which I was testing. The test has finished, but I didn't need to finish everything. And I still didn't finish a complete top. I only have to do one sleeve, so I finished the body, I still have to do one sleeve, as you can see, I was there last time. I just love knitting, uh, knitting the cables, um, it's something you have to concentrate on, which in a busy period at work I'm not able to do so, but I love, uh, just love to see the pattern grow. Uh, on your needles. So I'm really looking forward to finish this. I think not this weekend, but next weekend I will for sure uh, finish that sleeve and then after that I can wear it um, yeah, during our holidays and I should be able to wear it in the next episode. This yarn is from Veritas. It's cotton and bamboo, uh, so it's really soft. I like it um, a lot. Uh, I needed less of the yarn than I anticipated, so I will have left to make another uh, camisole or something. So, uh, yeah. It's a great pattern. I think Sari, Sari is known for her cables patterns, so I will for sure make more in the future, maybe a winter one um, someday. So, this is that whip. And then I have a sock. <laughs> it's a new cast on. It's my first time I'm making a DK weight sock, which is this one. It's in it's a tweed yarn. It's from Mylan White Lana Grossa. I uh, like the fact that it grows so fast. I've only knitted on this in the car uh, last week, so it's not that this is a lot of knitting already. Um, the only thing is the yarn feels plasticky, whereas it's not more plasticky than another yarn. So it's quite a standard, um, yeah, standard blend so of uh, wool and polyamide. So I don't know why it feels so plasticky in my hands, but I'm not particularly a fan of the feeling in my hands while knitting. Uh, but I am a fan of how it looks knit up. So. Um, Looking forward to finish this. This will be my mindless knits the coming time. So I should be able to finish this one as well by next time. Then I have an older whip that has uh, been taken out of my uh, stash, which is this coal. It has cables, but it really doesn't show really good because of the darker color. Uh, this project I'm using to learn how to knit continentally because I'm an English knitter. Um, but I did just make a mistake because I was so focused on the knitting uh, technique that I made this mistake. So I have to look where the mistake is and go back. Uh, but that should be fine. That's the advantage of a dark yarn. You don't see your mistakes really good. So I thought that this was a great uh, way to learn how to knit continentally. Also because it's a coal, uh, so the size doesn't really matter. If my gauge is off, that's fine because it's just like... Um, yeah, it's just a coal. If it's a little bit bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter. Why do I want to learn to knit continental? It's because for I want to use both methods to knit color work. But for the rest, I just want to stay, uh, well, and keep on knitting on my English style because I like it and it works. But this is what I have so far. It's on hold again because I have to find a mistake and I didn't have time for that. But if it's finished by winter, I'm glad. Um, and this is a new cast home, which was, well, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you know, I had to rip it back yesterday. It's my Anu top, which I'm testing for Bay Belly. Should be finished by the end of the month, so this will be my main focus. And I will have to keep other things 
uh, in the background, but um, yeah, I have I just casted it on again yesterday. I'm making this in Sira, which is a blend of bamboo and uh, silk. It's really soft, but I'm afraid that it will pillow out. But it's one of the softest yarns ever, so looking forward to it. Um, while I had to rip back, I changed a few things, so I changed to a German twisted cast on instead because I was afraid it wouldn't fit me and I switched to my higher higher needles because it has a lace pattern on the sides so I think my higher highs, which are sharp needles should be uh, the best needles for that so uh, I hope to show you this one as well in my next episode uh, I don't know if it will be three or four weeks before I have time to film but uh, I will show you more and then I have uh, four more rips sorry I know I have a lot, but it has been five weeks, so everything that has been put on hold in these weeks is still here to show you. This is a new sock, it's for, from Summerlee as well. Um, it's uh, the uh, ruffle sock uh, from the Shorty pattern set. It's, uh, I've made it, I've making, I am making this ball in uh, a summer yarn, uh, and I love how it stripes, it's really like candy. The yarn is wool, cotton, polyamide and something extra I can't remember but I like it it's it is special because it's more like a thread but it feels okay when you knit it so I'm really curious to see this knit up and finish this socks um, I hope to finish these as well by next time but I don't promise anything another pair of socks but it's an older whip that has been taking out so you have seen this spring bloom sock a few months ago and for those of you have, who have looked to my previous special episode about socks you have seen it more as well and then uh, more recent more recently as well um so and this is my second one i've made a mistake for the lace so this has more lace compared to the other one which makes that i will make two pairs one longer this one and one shorter so uh, this is also one of my sock whips I didn't do a lot about it, it's more like an in-between project. And then I've cast it on a sweater for my husband in Hulse Coast. It's a Nordland sweater from Petite Knit. I'm using three strands of Hulse Coast for this. Um, and I really like that shoulder. It's a special shoulder, I don't know how this is called. Um, I knit this on needle uh, number five, which is so good. Almost all of my other projects are on really small needles, so this one is really nice for my hands. Um, I really like Hulse Coast. It's like, I have the same feeling as when I started my No Frills sweater. It's like, yeah, this is it. This is the yarn I love. Um, so I'm looking forward to knit more on this one as well. So, love this. And then I, oops, something fell out. I have, oops, yeah, I have another uh, whip. For those of you who have seen the sock episode last week, I don't have, I didn't make any progress on it. But it's the broken rope for my husband in cotton yarn. But I haven't made any progress on this sock so far. And then um, I have another whip, but it's uh, a, a whip. Um, for crochet. My mom taught me how to crochet uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm making a face cloth to practice. It's this one. I only know one stitch, so <laughs> that's it. Um, it's ideal to practice uh, a little bit of crochet. Um, crochet is not my favorite thing to do. I prefer knitting, but I thought it should be a fun thing to have a crochet pattern as well. Just taking a sip of water. Okay, um, that's it actually concerning my webs and now it's time for acquisitions and this is actually already the first acquisition. Uh, it's a project work from Studio Berehut. Uh, she uh, has uh, drawn this uh, sheep herself and made a complete project back. 
it's one of the best project bags uh, quality wise I've ever seen so um, yeah, I would really recommend her uh, project bags it's also a really nice girl or woman uh, because I had some interactions with her on Instagram to choose a fabric for this bag it's really nice she, she sells mugs etc as well so I really like it price wise it was fine um, and yeah sheep I think sheep are nice for uh, yeah for project bags for knitting or knitting related things so I really like this one and then I have another project bag it's from the Brew Rabbit House um, it's something I wanted for a long time for those of you that follow uh, knitting traditions she has uh, some of their project bags as well it's also somebody who draws and um, I must say I like it but I would prefer Studio Bederhut if I would have to choose quality wise although um, for this project bag uh, she has a lot of other uh, images and I might buy more by uh, the end of the year because I've seen some nice winter uh, designs as well um, yeah I don't know what to say anymore about these project bags it's project bag if you want some special episode about project bags just let me know another acquisition is uh, this book it's sock you too um, it's a knitting book about all about socks and more like the funny type of socks like this is there's a pair of socks that looks like cheese uh, for example so it's more the funny type of socks um, I didn't pay this full price if you bought 30 euros from one shop you could buy this for 5 euros and I needed some knitting needles so that's why I have this book okay time to go to my plans I have a basket full of sock plans <laughs> wow what a surprise um this is yarn from Winnie's wool i won uh, during a bingo night from media molenbeek and i want to make a second pair of ruffle socks like i've shown you earlier on i really like uh, this one uh, it's not a color i would choose myself but it's a color that makes me happy so i don't know why i wouldn't choose it myself but it's a happy color i think it's really soft <laughs> soft and squishy and then uh, this is from my Summer of Socks I have from Walmart Verve. Um, it's basic sock and it's a really nice color. Um, I will make some honey socks, uh, honeycomb socks of these. Um, I don't know when I will start with it, but I would love to make something out of this type of yarn as well. And then I want to make my very first pair of uh, color work socks so these are the colors I will combine it's from Yavon for those of you that have experience with color work socks please let me know uh, what type of technique is the best for color work socks is it magic loop GPMs uh, short circulars what do you think is the nicest and the loveliest technique uh, to knit color work socks because I don't have any experience I have done color work for hats uh, but I didn't do color work on socks yet, so I'm happy to learn from you guys. So, so that's actually everything concerning plants, etc. Of course, I have some other things to talk about, and it's um, I want to have I want to recommend some podcasts, of course. And the first one I want to uh, recommend is Free Your Sheep. She's back. Uh, she hadn't filmed in a few months and then now she has one or two episodes again. Uh, so I really like it. Um, she lives in Iceland again. So she has a lot of uh, wool in her, uh, in her life, I guess. Um, it's a really nice environment. She has a lovely way of filming. So please check her out. She, uh, she's German origin. But uh, her English is, is just, you know, like really good because she has lived in the UK as well. And then another English one I really want to recommend is Mary Diddle Makes. Uh, I got to know her during the sundial test. And it's really nice to see another uh, sundial sweater growing during a podcast. So that's something I really like. So uh, that's what I have concerning podcasts. Um, something else I want to talk about is a Worldwide Knit in Public Day, which, which was a few weeks ago, like almost a month ago, I think. Um, it was 
a really nice Saturday. It was a warm Saturday. I went to Antwerp to uh, the Ministerie van Gebreide Zaken, uh, that, which is a du- Dutch uh, audio podcast on Spotify. I really liked meeting them because it was strange because they didn't have... Um, yeah, I didn't know how they looked like. So apparently one of them stood at the entrance of the park and I asked, are you coming here for the knitting as well? Which was a stupid question because she was the one organizing. But I didn't know because it's an audio podcast. Um, they are with three people. Uh, one is taking a pause, so they mainly have two people now. And I talked a lot of it. Um, I met a lot of new knitters. I also met like... Um, the uh, wife of one of my husband's friends apparently she knits as well um so that's <laughs> it's a funny thing because because i didn't know uh, he hadn't seen that that friend in ages as well because uh well yeah last years with covid and so on so um yeah i think it was 10 years ago i saw that uh woman because it's most of the time the guys only without women so uh yeah it was lovely to meet her again um yeah it's, it's just a lovely thing to meet knitters, uh, so I would love to do more of this uh, type of thing. I would love to have a knit night, even if it would be an online knit night, I would really love to have it. So uh, if anybody knows one, um, an online one I could join or a uh, in-person one in the neighborhood of Antwerp, please let me know. I'm going to the Knit and Not Fair in Tilburg, the Netherlands in August, so I hope to meet a lot of knitters there as well. And I'm looking forward to that, because I have subscribed to a yarn dyeing workshop of Draadkracht. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward. It's to dye yarn for a shawl, and that's a lovely thing, I think. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. So yeah. That's actually everything uh, I have to say. Please like and subscribe if you like this video and leave a comment because I just love reading comments. I know a lot of people just sent me via Instagram. That's fine as well. Um, I just love it. Okay, bye!